Radio Room presents. I must be honest, Mr. Giovanni, despite your previous overtures, I truly did not expect you to come tonight. I was just about to say the same thing to you, Benji. Benjamin, if we must be familiar. Call me Vinny. It's really Vincente, but I don't like that name. Makes me feel like we're in the old country. But it's a new world. The Nazis are defeated, and old enemies are building bridges. Much has changed in two years of peace, but not everything. I can see your men stalking around in the shadows. A lot of muscles, a lot of guns. You can't be too careful, considering you and yours are packing heat too. As you say, in our profession, one cannot be too careful. Old habits die hard, don't they, Benji? Uh, sorry, Benjamin. That they do, Vinny. But in the spirit of a new age of cooperation... Boys, why don't you put away your weapons? We cannot affect change with the barrel of a gun. Well, well, look at this. I suppose that goes for you too, boys. The Weinsteins are laying down their guns, which means we got it too. Only seems fair. There, see? No muss, no fuss. Never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Remember that shootout in Red Hook? The old East River Brewery? When we were dividing up the Death's Head Face's old territory. I still have the scar. It's right here, on my lip. Oh yeah, the Murder Corporation. Now there was an outfit that had some respect. Real respect. Brought together all the various organizations for a single purpose. Of course, they was dealing with the Green Llama. And now the Green Llama's gone, along with the rest of his elk. Yeah, the Llama wasn't no elk. He was like, um, uh, what, the uh, alpacas, what lived down in Peru. That's a Llama with two... <sighs> Never mind. We have a lot of particulars to discuss. The point is, there's too much money to be made to be killing each other. And with the Llama and the others still overseas helping with the war effort... It don't make no sense to be adding problems when all of ours have seemingly lost their capes and cows in France. Listen, nobody's looking to edge anybody out of territory. You look the other way when our truckers need to cut across Manhattan, and we'll turn a blind eye when a shipment of yours comes in on our docks in Brooklyn. The profit potential is high, and the Reds too much of a threat for the police to wake a sleeping dog. What use is there to continue spilling blood in the streets? The Weinsteins and the Giovannis have been at war for far too long. Glad we are in agreement. Indeed, it seems like we are, Vinny. Save for the customary handshake. The handshake? Sure. And thus, our pack is sealed. You heard it here first, boys. The war is over. What we got here is something they couldn't even get over in Europe. Peace in our time. Where the hell did that come from? This is a setup all along! You double cross in! Om, Mane, Padme, Om! The Green Lama strikes for justice! These are the true stories of Jethro Dumont, a millionaire playboy whose travels to Tibet revealed to him the secrets of the universe. Armed with amazing powers and cloaked in mystery, he has returned to America in a single-minded fight against crime as the Green Lama. Excuse me, has the TWA from London arrived yet? 
Uh, yes, ma'am. I believe they should be disembarking as we speak. Just head down to the hallway over there to gate four. Thank you. You look pretty nervous there. Waiting for your fella to come home? Fella? What? Lord, no. A friend is all. And an old one at that. Nothing more. Sure. I'm waiting for my friend, too. A very good one, in point of fact. He shipped out during the war, stayed stationed in Berlin, his gun aimed at the Reds. That's so. You look familiar. I'm sure I do. Yes! You're Evan Stewart Brown, aren't you? Of the Westchester Stewarts? Didn't know I represented a whole region, but yes, I'm she. Do I know you? I used to read about you in the papers. You were involved with that whole crimson hand business back in, what was it, 1936? 35, actually. Though Richard Foster's pulp set them in 1940 for some reason. Richard Foster? Doesn't matter. That was over 12 years ago. I'm surprised anyone remembers. Who could forget about a madman who shut down the whole city of Cleveland? And of course, there was the Green Llama. Ha. Huh. The Llama was a myth. Something made up by Foster to sell stories. Oh, honey. I saw him up close once. He was a hurricane, a force of nature. He wasn't like the others. Not even like that bronze man who used to live in the Empire State Building. He saved the whole city he did. All by himself. I wouldn't say all by himself. Oh. My. Word. Is that... Jethro! Jethro Dumont! Heaven go. It is so good to see you. Good to see you too. You look... tired. Exhausted. You don't have to sugarcoat it. I can only imagine the size of the bags under my eyes. I was going to comment on the pallor of your skin, but sure, we can go with that. Not sure about the beard, though. You'd be surprised how hard it is to find a razor over there, or much of anything. Unless you're willing to hit the black market. You got lazy. I got busy. I was helping rebuild Europe from the ground up, helping people find some semblance of sanity after years of madness. You really don't find the time to shave when you're helping restore an entire continent. Well, it's nice to know some things haven't changed. Still out to save the world. Come on, do you have any luggage besides that briefcase? The Buddha taught us not to be the carrier of burdens. I think he meant metaphorical baggage, but... Says the millionaire. This way. I've got the car parked in the pickup lot. We had to get rid of the driver four years ago. Fine. First stop, police headquarters. I need to see Caraway. I need to see what I can do. Not home first? Just wait till you see Marie. She's up to my shoulders already. No. Not home. Not yet. I've thrown myself at problems for so long that I need to accomplish something. Well, I have your getup in the trunk. As me. The real me. I left the Green Llama in France. If we're going to do any good in this world, it needs to be as humans, not as caricatures. Don't be ridiculous. You're a hero. Marie is the Llama's biggest fan. She is looking forward to seeing you again. I'm surprised she even remembers me. You gave us full run of your Dakota penthouse, Jethro. Thank you, by the way. You won't believe what they're charging for rent nowadays with all the GIs coming home. So she's been surrounded by photos of you and Jean. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. I'm trying to... Let go. I sometimes go whole minutes without thinking about her. Her and Sarang both. You're not bringing up anything I don't live with every day. I know what that feels like. How's it going over there, really? We see the newsreels, but... Getting better. Slowly, at least. But the stain of Hitler's horrors will take some time to lift from the fabric. It's been hardest talking to the survivors of the camps, and knowing so many stood by and did nothing. And then there's Stalin in the East promising more posturing and more bombs. I can only imagine. Communism is such a threat. It's not communism. It's Stalin and men like him. And with the way we're antagonizing them here, one of the main reasons I need to speak to Caraway. Don't tell me you've gone red. Communism goes against everything that we hold- Evan Gold, please. I haven't seen you in nearly seven years. I don't want to start a reunion with a debate on the merits between communism and capitalism. Can I say something? Of course. Anything. I don't need to tell you that a lot has changed since we met all those years ago. I'm not even talking about the Lama. And I think you'll see how much everything has changed since the war. But I'm hoping you haven't changed too much. How do you mean? 
We won the war, but I'm worried we're losing something in the victory. Something that the Green Llama... Something that you stood for. Whatever you found in Europe, and whatever you find here, promise me you won't forget what you found in Tibet. Evangel, I... I promise. But I'm not putting the robes back on. That part of me is over. Uh, come in. Commissioner Carraway, I got the report on the Weinstein Giovanni shootout from last night. Thank you, Sergeant Whalen. Though I'm pretty sure I already know the butcher's bill with the way the headquarters is chattering. About 20 on each side, though a couple of the Weinsteins made it out with... More than 40 total casualties? When the Giovannis and Weinsteins go to war, they do not mess around. Huh. And look at that. They even took out Vincenti, Giovanni, and Benji Weinstein. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a nicer pair. I would feel bad if it didn't create a power vacuum. Every two-bit hood is going to be gunning for their day of glory now. Captain, that's not the worst of it. Oh, Lord. A little girl? Yeah, only eight. Bystander. It was a stray bullet that got her. Went through a window while her mother was putting her to sleep. <sighs> Sometimes I miss the days when we had to deal with clay monsters that like to rip up Nazis. Ain't no more Nazis now. Our boys made sure of that. Yeah, what did they leave behind? Caraway? Can someone tell me where Commissioner Caraway is? Please tell me that ain't Councilman Snyder I hear shouting my name. I believe it is, sir. I've already got the War Department bugging me about the missing warplanes. This is the last thing I need. Think you can close the door before he makes it across the bullpen? I'm not sure that would be the best idea, boss. I happen to like my job. Commissioner, there you are. Councilman, you're looking pretty ruddy and winded for a man in the prime of his youth. Yes, now that you've dispatched the requisite insult. Uh, just the cleanest of the ones floating around in the back of my mind. Can you tell me why the mayor only learned about the Giovanni Weinstein shootout from the front pages of the Herald Tribune? Ah, oh, look. Betty Dale got the byline. Good for her. Commissioner, the mayor is not pleased. And you think I am? A little girl got killed in her bed because two mobs decided to take their war to the streets. And it's your job to catch those hooligans, inform the executive branch of the city government, and keep the press from printing salacious and unfounded rumors, all of which you failed to do. You think this is the first time this has happened since I put on my badge? <laughs> Snyder, you're fresher than the laundry off the line, so please, don't come in here yelling about how the mayor is feeling as if it'll make any difference. Commissioner, John, I don't want to give you a hard time. Lord knows you get enough. Besides, I'm the one pushing the mayor to give you and your boys more funding. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the day. Believe me or not, either way, we need to work together. And if we're going to work together, I need you to make it so we can work together. Councilman, if there's one thing I am, it's a team player. Ain't that right, Wayland? Uh... Need I remind you, I was one of the idiots who helped save this city back when everything went to hell. <sighs> that brings me back to my point. You need help if we're to prevent shootouts like this from happening again. You're stuck in the time when you had costume vigilantes running around to pick up the slack. My father always said, wishing for yesterday only makes tomorrow come sooner. Those heroes are gone, either dead on the battlefields or vanished like so many legends. That's where you're mistaken. John Carraway was a hero all by himself. Was I talking to you, sir? Oh my god, you're Jethro Dumont. So I've been told. Jesus. It's good to see you, Jethro. It's good to see you too, but don't hug me so tight. Uh, seven years in Europe really did a number on you, huh? The beard is awful. <laughs> I know. Mr. M Mr. Dumont, it is an honor to meet you. Your city councilman Christopher Snyder, yes? Oh. Oh, you, you've heard of me? I might have been in Europe, but that doesn't mean I didn't keep up to date with my city. And speaking of... Councilman, I know you and I have a lot to discuss, but would you mind if I took the chance to catch up with my old friend? Um, yes, yes, of course. And Mr. Dumont, I'm having a luncheon in a week for my re-election campaign, and I was wondering if- Thank you, Wayland. Uh, if you could show the councilman out. And when you're done, could you head to the hospital? I want eyes on a sleeping beauty should anyone get any ideas. Yes, sir. Yes, well, my secretary will be in touch if you're interested. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Dumont. Thanks for saving me there, Jethro. <sighs> Don, good to see you. Sit down. You've probably been sitting for hours on the plane. 
but I know how those sardine cans they got busting everyone back and forth can be exhausting. Besides, my knees ain't what they used to be. Neither are mine, to be honest. You don't look any older than you did when you shipped out. Then I guess it's not just your knees that are going. Ah, how is it over there? Getting better, though I'm more concerned about what's going on over here. Have you spoken with Ken yet? You were my first stop. I wanted to speak to you about- You should see Ken. He's probably visiting Benjamin at Bellevue. Ben is still- Afraid so. I'd hope Ben would have healed once he was home. But nobody really does, do they? Nope. I served. The wounds to the body heal in time, but uh, the mind- That's what I wanted to talk to you about. My mind is full of the war and what it left behind. I fought on the front line, and while the bullets bounced off me, they went through my friends, my brothers. I never felt more useless than I did watching my comrades die while I- Keep living. I went to the front to do some good. I stayed behind to do the same. And it doesn't- it doesn't feel like I'm doing enough. I need to get back to it. As Jethro Dumont, you know better than anyone what needs to be done. I just said, Ben and Ken could use a friend. I'll try and see them both on my way home. But John, I must ask, what is this? Nearly 50 dead, including a young girl? Nothing gets past you. All that talk about Jethro Dumont. Still got the law in you, don't you? What happened? Two rival mobs, Italian and Jewish, both of them been making a good amount of cash in the European black market. Based on what we can tell, tensions between them boiled over, and we got this mess. Has it gotten that bad? Jethro, you know better than anyone that it was always like this, and it's never stopped. <laughs> Do you remember how we first met, John? <laughs> Don't think I could forget even if I tried. The shooting at the SS Heggie. Three children dead because some mobster thought they could take out a rival member in a drive-by. You remember how many times I came to see you, making sure the guys who did it were brought to justice? I do. That was why I used to put the robes on. That was why I tried to be something more than Jethro Dumont. I thought perhaps I could lead others to enlightenment by example. Be a bodhisattva. But then I come back to find this. You'd think all the work we did, we would have made some difference. I need to make that difference. You did. It might have seemed that way, but you did. We all did. I see it in small ways, small moments, the kind that get lost when this sort of terrible thing happens. The question that's picking at the back of my brain, though, is if you're going to be content sitting on the sidelines. I'm not. So, then let's go, right now, down to the hospital. I need to do a follow-up, and you need to see your friends. Grab your cap, and I'll get Evan Gold to swing us around. Just don't think I'll be helping you investigate anything. You haven't worn the hood since the war. Trust me, you didn't have to spell that out for me. Though, I won't ask what's in that briefcase of yours. Didn't seem like there's any place for heroes. Well, Jethro, that's where you're wrong. There's always a place for heroes. Whether their name is the Green Llama, or... Berkeley, uh, Nurse Monroe, I need your help. Yes, sorry, coming, Dr. Hancock. Oh, there you are, Nurse Monroe. This place is a madhouse with all these gangsters shot up. Hoodlums and police officers and lawyers and... And can you help me with this fella here? I need to transfer him onto his bed from the gurney. Certainly, Doctor. One, two, three... Yes. <laughs> who is he? Oh, one of the lucky idiots who made it out alive from the Giovanni Weinstein shootout. If you can call being in a coma lucky, I read about them in the paper. Little girl lost her life because of their turf war. Well, you should have been here during the 20s and 30s. You wouldn't believe the sort of madness we used to see come through here. Oh, I believe it. My father used to tell me stories. Dr. Hancock, this says here he had two bullet wounds to the stomach. Yes, nurse. But I'm not seeing his broken left femur listed. His broken... Nurse, might I remind you that your place is not... My word, his femur is broken. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, yes, well, that will uh, <clears throat> that'll be all, nurse. Thank you. If you could uh, go check on the other one, that would be much appreciated. One room over. How did you know? The police officer tipped me off. Mm -hmm, that's the one. Yes, he just showed up. Sent down by the commissioner, apparently. And um, uh, can you get Nurse Hannah to get Dr. Jenkins for me? Hold it right there, Missy. You checking in on Sleeping Beauty in there? I am indeed, officer. Doctor's orders. 
It's too bad we can't put him to sleep, if you catch my meaning. Like a horse with a broken leg, right? When idiots like him go around shooting themselves up and getting little girls killed, yeah. We should put him down like they was cattle. What's your name, sir? Sergeant. Sergeant Wayland. Well, I'm certainly going to remember that. <sighs> All right, Mr... Robert Corngut. Let's see how you're doing today. Damn. I'm sorry, sir. What did you say? Damn. Doctor! Doctor Hancock, he's... Ambush. Ambush? Both. We are... Nurse, if you could move aside, please. Certainly, Doctor. What did that thug tell you, girly? Nothing. Nothing. He just groaned is all. Yeah, I bet. What's all the commotion down there? One of the gangsters decided to wake up, Nurse Hannah. He's lucky none of the girls here put a pillow over his face. Getting some little child killed. Serves him right, whatever he suffers. Berkeley? Are you listening? Your brows furrowed something awful. You keep that up, you'll get wrinkles all over that pretty young face of yours. Mm, what did you say, Nurse Hannah? Sweetheart, you will never find a man with your mind in the clouds. Nurse Hannah, isn't it time for your cigarette break? Ah, you're right. Do you mind watching the... Already on it, Nurse Hannah. You enjoy your break. Oh, and make sure you get Jenkins on your way out. Seems like Hancock missed the fact that one of our mobsters had a busted femur. That man would miss the nose on his face if someone didn't point it out for him. Ambush. Ambush? Why would he say ambush if both of those mobsters were... Uh, miss? Miss? Uh, I'm sorry, could you help me? Of course, just a moment. I'm uh, here to see my, uh, cousin, Ben Mendoza... He's in the veteran's wing, but I'm afraid I've been turned around. Hey, I know you. You're Ken Clayton. I loved you in Dreams of Sunrise. Oh, well, thank you. I don't mean to be rude, but... Right, your cousin. Yeah. Let me look him up in the rolls and I'll bring you over. Ah, here he is. Room 2401. Follow me. I'll take you there. Sorry about this. It's been crazy. What's going on? Shootout between the Giovannis and the Weinsteins. Only a few survivors, one of whom decided to wait until the lunch rush to decide to wake up. Don't fret about it. Your cousin is this way. Excuse me, Mr. Mendoza? Hmm? There's someone here to see you. Hi, Ben. Ken? Ken, I told you not to come. And not say hi to my favorite cousin? Come now, Benjamin, you know me better than that. <clears throat> Nurse, can you give us a moment? Of course. You're looking well? You told them you were my cousin? Cousin? <laughs> that was the best you could come up with? Mendoza and Clayton. Yeah, those are two last names that sound like they're part of the same family tree. It's been over a month, and I haven't been able to see you. And the idea that I might not want you to see me never crossed your mind? Of, of course it did. I just didn't want to believe it. Ben, I know it's been hard since you came back, but th that doesn't mean you have to deal with this all alone. Keep your voice down. We don't want the whole hospital to hear you. And what if they did? Ken, you have to think about your career. No, don't hold my hand. I want to think about you. I've left that life behind before. I can do it again. Not now. Not with the films you're being offered. Not with... Not with a cripple by your side? I didn't say that. Yeah, but you were thinking it. I can see it on your face. You lost a leg, Ben, not your life. If only all the wounds were so visible. You never talk about what happened. Why you... Lost my leg? I was fighting Nazis alongside the Green Llama. You know that much. What more do you need to know? He's back, Ben. Jethro Dumont, the Green Llama. He, he's back from Europe. Evangel called me the other day, told me she was picking him up from the airport today. That's so. And? Please, don't change the... Did you hear that? Get down! Get down! Why? 
Why is there never anything good on? And now it's time for Radio Players Theater. Ugh, radio plays. No thank you. I suppose this will do. Heaven go. John, good to see you. We're heading to the hospital. <laughs> and? Well... I believe Mr. Dumont, so unused to the manners of polite society, is asking for a favor. Would you please take us to... Bellevue. As long as we're clear that I am not your chauffeur and that this is still my car. Of course. You have to understand, John, it's all about where I can help best. We interrupt this program to bring you a breaking news bulletin. A gunfight has broken out at Bellevue Hospital. What? Reports indicate gunmen have entered the facility, possibly to finish what they started in last night's massacre. Police are saying... Uh, now I know how Councilman Snyder felt. We need to get there now. We? I can't allow you to go there as a civilian. But if a certain verdant Avenger were to show up... Now is not the time, Carraway. You heard the man. There's a procedure that has to be followed. Indeed. Now, let me out of here. I have to take control of the situation. Hey, Flatfoot! Who are you calling? Commissioner Carraway. Get on the two-way, officer. Call in any squad car in the area and get them to Bellevue. Now. Then round up another 30 men. We need to put out this fire before it turns into an inferno. Uh, isn't that the fire department's job, sir? It's a metaphor. Jethro, I want... Gah. Where'd he go? Where did who go, sir? I guess some things never change. This traffic is a nightmare, Evangel. Can't you get around it? This hour? That'll be a miracle. When did it get this bad? Thanks to American ingenuity, everyone's got a car now. Not just the haves. You won't see this in Red Russia. We really don't have time for this. Jethro, we always have time for a heated political- There are people dying, Evangel. There are always people dying, Jethro. You know that better than anyone. Not while I'm around. Go get him, Mama. Hey, get out of the street, you loon! No! Get off of mine! Home, Padme, home! Cops. Didn't expect him to fly away, huh? Come on out, you two guys! This hospital ain't big enough for all of us, let alone this now. You guinea think you can throw New York, eh? Well, show you! What the hell is going on? It's the Giovannis and the Weinsteins. How can you be certain? Call it a hunch. Quick, get behind the bed. Mr. Mendoza, I'm gonna need you to come down onto the floor. Way ahead of you, sweetheart. God, this brings back memories. Weird memories. You've no idea. You'll have to tell me about them sometime. If we survive this. That's the spirit. No thugs around in the corner. Can't get a clear shot on them. Damn it, Sus. How could we let the Giovannis get the slip on us? We should have beaten them here. David, please. I'm just worried about making sure we shoot him dead and get our man out of here alive and in one piece before the cops arrive. Just one? What about Herschel? Hirsch took a slug to the head. He won't be waking up anytime soon, if ever. Right now, I want you to think about how we're gonna get out of here without getting ourselves turned into lead pencils. Money, pod mail. What was that? What was what? That, that whisper. I didn't hear nothing. Oh, money, pod mail. There, there it is again. That whisper. I'm telling you, there's not nothing. Here. What is going on? Uh, I have a suspicion. Told you. You two stay here. I'm going to check and see. I'm going to suggest you don't. Sir, there may be people injured out there and I can help them. I know, but right now the sky is green, which means there's a tornado coming. And you don't want to be out there when it's passing by. Mr. Clayton, I appreciate your concern, but there's nothing stopping me from... My name Padme home! That wasn't... it... it couldn't be. 
Like I said, this brings back lots of memories. Wait, you don't mean... I don't hear anything. I'm going to see if I can help. Wait, don't! Oh my god. Nurse! Nurse, I need your help. This officer was shot. You're... You're... Jethro Dumont, I know it's a ridiculous name, but please, I've got my hand pressed down on the wound. His pulse is faint and growing weaker. We need to get him into surgery immediately. Oh, yes, absolutely. The gangsters, what happened to them? I don't know. It was the Green Llama. The Green Llama. I knew it! The Green Llama is a myth. And that's what they always say. It's good to see you, Jethro. It's good to see you, Ken. But our reunion will have to wait. Sergeant Wayland here could use our help. Of course. Is Ben... He's fine. But let's attend to Wayland, shall we? Nurse... Monroe. Nurse Monroe, I'm sure you know a bit more about first aid than Mr. Clayton. Would you mind staying with me while he goes and gets a doctor? Of course. If they haven't all run out of the building, you might find a few of them near the surgical wing. I think I saw a few of them run that way. Take a right at the end of the hallway. The entrance will be at the far end. Right end of the hallway. Got it. Back soon. Now, Miss Monroe... Might as well call me Berkeley. Berkeley, could you check and see if the bullet went through? It looks like it did. Good. Now press your hand on the wound as hard as you can. You know a little about doctoring, Mr. Dumont. I was on the front. You learn a lot about bleeding there. You think they came to finish off the two Weinsteins? I can't rightly say. I've only just come back to town. But I did hear these two families are at war. Pretty violent homecoming. They usually are, in my case. It's just that one of the Weinsteins... I think he said they were ambushed. Ambushed? It's a mob war. Someone is trying to get- Who told you that? No one. I figured it out on my own. Hmm. Well, well done. Thank you. But now that the Green Llama is back, he can stop it before it starts. I'm not sure even the so-called Green Llama could take that on. Don't be too sure. I spent my life hearing about him. There's no way he'd run from this fight. You might have money, Mr. Dumont, but the Llama's got something more. He's got spirit. Spirit? That, and he can punch through a brick wall. Or so I've heard. Jethro, I've got the doctors. What about the rest of the goons? They're taken care of. (sighs) Praise God that's over. No. It's only just beginning. The officer remains in critical condition. All four men from the Giovanni and Weinstein gangs were found unconscious at the scene and were eventually charged in attempted murder, amongst a number of other charges. However, it is the rumors that the Green Llama has returned. Not even back one day, and you couldn't help yourself, could you, Jethro? (laughs) Can't say I'm surprised, but I am relieved. See, Gene, I told you he would be all right, eventually. Mom, Mom! Yes, Marie, is everything all right? Wall is making a funny sound. A funny sound? Well, let's see what makes it so funny. See? A funny sound. (laughs) That's just the secret elevator, sweetheart. Secret elevator? Yes. It's the one Uncle Jethro and Aunt Jean used to use all the time when you were just a baby. What does it mean? It means that the Green Llama's returned. I don't believe it. The Llama ain't been seen since before the war. I'm just saying what they're saying, Fingers. The Green Llama is back. Took out two squads, but shot up the hospital. Nowhere is safe. I said we get in the boat and book it while the booking's good. I ain't leaving this here load of silk just because you all dredged up a boogeyman. This is worth a couple of C's, at least. Steal it. That's quality material. Boss, I don't know. It's bad news if the Llama finds us with a ration card. I'm just saying. You're saying, they're saying, pfft. I'm saying, I met the Green Llama. I know what it's like to see him up close and personal. You don't remember. You don't know what it was like back then. Damn Buddhist bastard always made a mess of things. He took out Pete Berry. Took out the Murder Corporation. Took out even good old Wits Pomato. But then came the war and poof! If the Llama was back, we'd know. We'd see him in every shadow. See him on the wind. Oh crap. Where'd that come from? Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. He's in the rafters. Out there. In the hood, in the boat. It's... Oh, money, partner, oh. It's the llama. Hey, what are you doing, Fingers? 
Stop shoving me! You wanted the Green Llama, there he is! Go! Go get him! Where the hell are you going? Fingers! Fingers, don't leave me alone with them! God damn. All right, Llama. You want me? Come on! No! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Damn it! There ain't no point in running. You want me, Llama? You want me? You took me out back in the day. <coughs> you came for me in the slammer. Now you're back, and you have no idea what's coming. You're not gonna survive this, Llama. You're not gonna survive the return of... Oh, crap! Om Mane Padme Om! The Green Llama, Episode 1, Homecoming. Written by Adam Lance Garcia. The Green Llama created by Kendall Foster Crossan. Produced by Adam Lance Garcia. Directed by Steele Filipek. Sound designed by Christina Morse. Music by Brian Metolius. Featuring the vocal talents of Sean Marco Ceresi, Sarah Smithton, Dana Aber, Justin Torres, Brett Druck, Mark Bradley Miller, Ben Mendoza, Riley Barrett, Steele Filipek, and Adam Lance Garcia. The Green Llama is used by permission of Kendra Cross and Burroughs, all rights reserved. On the next episode... He's still a vigilante, Caraway. That doesn't mean you can make my man hunt the Green Llama in the streets like he's Al Capone. The Llama is breaking the law. Green Llama, you're under arrest. Keep your hands up or we'll shoot. He's making a break for it. Speak of the devil. Is it the Emerald Boy Scout himself? After all this time, there is so much we need to discuss. Do you know what they called me back then? The Death's Head Face. <laughs>